I, I, they started completely on accident and I didn't know what out of body was. I had no reference point. I, the internet, I don't think really it existed, but I didn't have it. I, so I didn't have that to access to try to figure anything out. And so it also happened while I was asleep. So to me, I just thought it was a really crazy dream. And that, and that lasted for a while. I'm not sure exactly when I figured out like, oh, those weren't dreams at all. <laughs> um, but the first time I accidentally went out of body, I was just standing by my bed in my room looking around and thinking, this is a really vivid dream. It's very realistic. And I just feel exactly like when I'm awake, but even more awake than awake. And this is even more detailed almost than reality and it's a really confusing state to be in and then I looked down at my bed and noticed my body was there and that kind of freaked me out I was like what kind of a dream is this <laughs> I'm seeing my own body and you know I, di I didn't have any fear of like whether or not I was dead or anything I just thought this is just so strange and then I thought well if that's my body what am I and I looked down at myself and I actually saw what I later learned was our chakra system. I saw a string of glowing lights and they were rainbow colored. <laughs> and I thought, that's really weird. What is this? And then I thought, well, can I move if I don't have a body? And I, I imagined moving and that sent me moving, but moving just by imagining it was so different that I then just started spinning out of control because I was like, well, where am I going? And what is this? <laughs> I, I sort of lost control of that experience and, you know, woke up and thought, wow, that was the weirdest dream. And I have a lot of very intense dreams my whole life. So this was the weirdest dream I had up to that point, I thought. Now I look back and it's really easy to see that that was my first recognizable, conscious, out-of-body experience. But shortly after, I started having some pretty amazing experiences as well that were life-changing. And obviously that one was in a way too, but I've had, you know, journeys that go far, far beyond uh, the earth even, and, and they're very similar and they're also out-of-body experiences. So I don't know if you want me to jump into that. For sure. But I was a bit curious, did you want to explore that further? So after that experience, were you sort of interested, oh, could I do that again? Or what else could I do? So Definitely. was it accidental or was there also an intentional part to it? It was accidental. Uh, there was definitely a, a large part of me that was very fascinated by it, interested in it, wanted to experience it again. But I also had a lot of trauma growing up. I was in a lot of trauma at that moment. Life was very stressful to me. I was maybe, uh, when that happened, maybe 12 or 13, I want to say. Um, and just a lot was going on. My father had died when I was 11. We were very poor growing up and a lot of chaos. And I, you know, had a lot of also poor choices I was making in life because of all of that. So I was getting in with, you know, the wrong crowds, so to speak. And I was using drugs at an early age. And so a lot of these experiences happened to me and were kind of calling me back to my true heart and my true self. And I think keeping me on a higher path. And at the same time, I was going through this trauma and this self-destruction and this depression and this anxiety and all of these things. So it was very distracting, to say the least. It's very hard to just focus on that aspect of being when all the other things are going on as well. So that was my experience, at least. It wasn't something I was able to really give, I think, the attention it deserved, but it didn't go away. That didn't make it stop. It kept going, but I wasn't able to really... I, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if I could have explored it even more intentionally. And at the same time, I'm very glad that I went through what I did and learned what I did about myself and developed the skills to be resilient and to thrive in life. I'm very grateful for that. So I don't know that I would have changed anything either. Yeah, I definitely think that once we get through the challenges, right, we sort of understand why they, I don't know that they always give us an edge, but we sort of understand why they were in our path and why they were on our way. And we sort of cannot imagine being the person we are today without having gone through those difficulties, right? Right. And if you would have told me back then who I would be today, I'd be like, that's not me. That's not a person I recognize. <laughs> right. That's not a person who carries all this pain I feel. Right. And all this torture I seem to go through. And it's also interesting that even when I go through struggles today, sometimes I get lost in that 
why, why me, or why is this happening? Or how do I make it end? Or why is it so hard? And I can look back at that time and see that same feeling, right? And, and go like, but it ended, right? Or it passed. And it actually wasn't as horrible as I imagined in the moment it could be, or, you know, the suffering didn't last as long as I worried it might. And all of these things are true. And so I can bring those to bear today and say, I know this is hard. I know I'm going to get through it. I know that things are going to get better than ever, actually, once I do go through it. And that it's probably not going to be as hard or long as I imagine it might be. Mm, this, those are such wise words. And when you go through the why me phase how do you deal with that I, I part of it is like you said like i look back and i see the other times i've suffered and i see how they've actually given me some sort of gem or tool or ability or understanding of self or how they've empowered me or given me what i can then share with others to help them as well and that also there's always um an aspect that i've come to just see as purifying right? And all of the suffering where when I come out the other side, I really am better than ever. And it's because I've let go of something that I used to identify with or just hold on to or misunderstood about the world or myself. And so that's huge, actually. If we have to suffer a little bit to let go of some of that darkness and to no longer carry it around with us, that's just the death throes, right? Or maybe the birth pangs of what we're transforming into. And so I try to remind myself of that when I go through struggles now, like, again, this is temporary, it's going to pass, it's not going to be as bad as you fear it might be in the middle of it here. And also, you're going to transform, you're going to purify, you're going to release even more. And so, again, when you come out on the other side there, you really are better than ever. It's better and better and better each time, actually. <laughs> so I try to remember all of those things. It helps a bit. So going back to the out of bodies, tell me about the times where you were able to travel outside of the world. What was that like? It, it's really beyond description. And I've told this story so many times, so I have words for it now for most of it. But really, I can't ever capture it. Because again, being out of body for me, at least, and I think I've heard a lot of people describe it this way, it, it feels more real than this does, right? Then, And that's hard to even describe or explain because this feels the most real we usually feel compared to sleeping or other states of consciousness. But that feels more real. It feels like, oh, this is actually who I really am. Or this is what I really am. This is where I actually am from or where I belong. And, and so that's in itself nearly indescribable. In this specific experience I had that really changed uh, everything for me. Uh, like many of my experiences over time, but this was maybe one of the first most profound experiences of my life. I, again, uh, was out of body, but I seemed to be in a ship. And I seemed to be with... Um, some that I've now understand, and I call them my spiritual guides and allies. At the time, I was just somebody, some people are behind me, right? and I knew they were of a different quality than anyone I knew, right? Like I knew there was like a higher or stronger or more pure sort of like energy around them. But again, I didn't really have words for this, or I didn't really think of things in those terms. So I didn't, I didn't know how to describe this. But they were with me. And I and I remember it at the moment thinking like, oh, I'm always with them. So clearly I had had other experiences that I don't have conscious recall of um, because that was familiar to me already. So we're traveling in a ship and the ship doesn't actually seem like a ship to me. It seems like a construct of a ship that is makes it more helpful for my mind to accept what's happening. It seems like we're actually just able to move anywhere we want and do anything we want. But... For whatever reason, they kind of constructed this ship idea for us to float around in outside of the earth <laughs> through the solar system and beyond so that I could accept it more and understand it more or something, right? I really don't. So people have asked me again and again, like, but couldn't it have been a real ship and those were extraterrestrials? And I really don't think that's what was going on. I really think this is an astral out of body experience and there's nothing physical about it really, but it does reflect reality because as we're going, I'm seeing there's the sun, there's the earth from afar, here's the moon, there's Mars, there's Saturn. These are things I recognize. And as we're going further and further, we're leaving the solar system. And I'm like, wow, this is exciting, right? I'm a very curious person. I'm very into like science and I was very into the universe and galaxies and 
even then, I, I think it's interesting that I don't think many people at that time had really seen, or maybe we didn't even really have them, but like Hubble telescope images of nebula and galaxies and these things, I at least had not ever been immersed in, right? I had understood that they existed and maybe saw some drawings in some science textbooks or something, but not really much. And as we're going, I'm seeing what I later would see in pictures and in videos and understand that this is actually what people think is going on out there. And I didn't know that at the time, but in the moment, as I'm going through this ship, leaving our solar system, seeing space and seeing all these galaxies, I'm like lost in the beauty of it. I was like, wow, what is all of this? Just sparkly glowing dust and like flowing things and swirling galaxies and just, and the immensity of it as well as beyond what I can describe, like how many galaxies we went by and how many <laughs> nebula or <laughs> stars or just it was pretty pretty intense and and then we started kind of going faster and faster and like yeah yeah well you've seen all that now let's like get where we're going <laughs> um and we got to like the farthest distance and they were clearly like look over there and i look and there's all of the galaxies and stuff we had seen and then they kind of came into a point of this massive cluster of intense light and if if we could ever quantify it it's uncountable suns and stars and brighter than we can imagine brighter than any of the suns and stars we had flown past on the way there and so many of them and this is the center. It's the center of everything. I mean, on one side is everything we had come through. And on another side, there's like an equal opposite mirror image of that. And then it looks to me like a figure eight coming out from this center of intense light. And I'm just like pressed up against the walls of the ship that are apparently transparent and just like looking and on. I don't think I moved or talked or I was just staring at it because it was so beautiful. And I remember feeling like, again, like that's actually home. Like that's actually where I'm from or we're from, where everybody's from. <laughs> like this is God. This is the center of all things is what I've come to call it because it was the center of all things. So we have this figure eight sort of hourglass shape on one side and this figure eight sort of hourglass shape on the other and the center of all things. And I don't know how long I just stared and they just let me just stare and just take it in. And I didn't ask any questions. You know, I would kind of point at things and be like, wow, look at that. Oh, look at that. Like they had never seen it or something <laughs> like, wow, isn't this cool? And uh, eventually they were like, okay, you know, that's, and I remember them saying when I was like, this is where I'm from, or this is the center, right? This is God and this is heaven. They were like, yes, this is where you're from, but there's where you are. Like, there's where you are now. And it went, we looked all the way down to like the end of one of the figure eight sides, one of the hourglass halves, and way like out towards the very end of the bottom of the curving, like far as you can get. They're like, that's where you are. That's where you're from now. I was like, wow. And they're like, and now we'll go back. And we just went back. Like we had taken all the time to move out there, <laughs> taken all the time to look at all the things. That was really just for my benefit because we went back in an instant. We really like took maybe the equivalent of what I would conceive of as seconds. And then we were here and we were looking back at the earth. And I was like, wow, all of this is so beautiful. It's so cool. Like, I really don't want to leave here. <laughs> I really don't want to go back, actually. <laughs> you know, but they're like, well, we have to go back. And and here's here's where we're going to go back through. And the earth they showed me was actually covered. And it, this is like a layer over the earth. And this is on a spiritual or other dimensional level. And it looked to me like an infinite amount of spinning tornadoes. If you were looking at them from the top down and they were touching edge to edge. So there's no space that isn't a spinning vortex, basically. And I, and there's so many of them. And I was like, and they're like, which one do you want to go in? And I'm like, I don't know what, why would I know? <laughs> what do you mean? Which one? What are they? Like, and they're explained like, these are different timelines or they're different lives. Then you live all of them. You can live any of them. Which one would you like to experience? And I was like, that's an overwhelming choice. I, if there's this many of them. How would I know? And I was like, can you help me choose? Do you know things about these different lives? And they were like, yeah. 
what would you like? And I said, I would like to go into life that is the best for me and for everyone else. And I meant everyone, like the planet. <laughs> and they loved that answer. And they were like, that's this one. And so I jumped down that spinning vortex and I seemed to come back into the earth plane of consciousness, I'll call it. But when I came back, I was coming back from the end of this life. And I didn't know that at the time. And it actually took me a long time to figure that out, that that's what that was. But I came back and I looked through what seemed to be a higher up window in a taller building in a city that was, I want to say, almost like utopia. It was it was very technologically advanced, but also good, which because I know we have a lot of images in our head of technologically advanced bad futures. But this one wasn't. It was positive. Everything was clean and functional and seemed good. And I looked through this window high up or like floating. I'm floating in the air. And I see this very old person and they see me and they go and they're shocked. And, and I know they died after that, but I didn't actually see it. And I just kept going. And now I realize like that was me at the very end of this life. And I see myself. And that's when I think I will know that, oh, I'm dying right now. That's what I assume because that's what it seems like to me. And that's what I've started to understand about that. At the time, it was just a weird experience. I was like, I don't know. I looked at an old person through a window in a weird city. <laughs> that was what it was to me, right? And then as I'm coming back, I'm actually seeing all these scenes from my life from that point backwards. And I'm seeing even numbers. The latest number I saw was 2020 or 2021. I can never remember now. I have to go back to my journal. But one of those years, it was the latest number I actually saw. And I just saw scenes of my life going all the way back. And it was like I was moving through time to get to me in my bed, sleeping, and come back into my body as 13-year-old um, Lindsay. And I finally got back to that point and I was getting closer and closer physically to my house the whole time I was moving through the timeline and seeing the images. And I plopped into my body and I woke up and again, I was just like, what just happened to me? <laughs> like, I don't think I could craft such a dream if I try. I've had, again, a lifetime of super intense, really enigmatic, sometimes prophetic, sometimes dreams, but nothing like this. And so, of course, I wrote every single detail. I was a writer. I was a journaler. And, and I, you know, again, I didn't really have the internet. I didn't have anything to go compare it to. I didn't really have people who really were that interested because a lot of my friends were in deep trauma themselves. They were, like, trying to just get through the day. And, you know, we were using drugs and whatnot. And so it just wasn't, it just wasn't something I got to explore that much. But I'll add one more little detail to this. And this is that I, I went to the library I've always been a big fan of the library. I'm a big reader, a big writer. I went to the library and I got a Nova episode. I want to say it was Nova. And it was something about space because this experience, right, was just in my brain and I needed more and I wanted to understand. And so I was like, I don't know, I'll watch this random scientific video about space. And I brought it back and I put it in and I started to see the the images I had seen on that experience. And I it just filled me, it overwhelmed me. It was the first moment I really realized that actually happened. That was not a dream. Like I, the things that I'm seeing in this movie are exactly the same as the things I've seen in this experience. And I didn't know that ahead of time. So it was real. And as I'm realizing this and I'm overwhelmed by that this happened to me and that this was real, I literally, as I think, this was real. This happened to me. Like a spark of light bloated in front of me in physical reality. It made a popping sound. I saw the light explode. It was like confirmation. It was like my soul was like, yes, get it through your thick skull. Like this actually happened. Really big things happened to you. Very important things. And it um, took that to really like drive it home and to make me like experience and accept the experience and know what it was and really let it sink into my heart and soul. And, and so that was its own fascinating experience of just confirmation. And it actually scared me. It really scared me because materialistically walking around in 3D reality, just lights don't just or little sparks don't just explode in front of you. Like that's not a thing that happens. So I actually got very scared and I thought, well, what's actually going on and what is reality and who am I and what's happening to me? And again, I had no one really to help me through that. So it was just actually pretty scary, pretty overwhelming, very beautiful, very enlightening, very like again, cementing in my heart, like what I'm here for, who I am, what I'm supposed to do with my life, 
you know, in many ways. And then also really scary, really hard to integrate into reality. And, and also what depressing, because part of me again was struggling a lot in life and that place out there, that center of all things, that ship, those people who brought me on the ship, like that was just good. I just part of me, like, can I just stay there? Why do I even have to jump down through the tornado tunnel into this life again? <laughs> like, was isn't that better? So there's also some of that too. So a really overwhelming, intense experience. Yeah. And when you describe, you know, wanting to stay there and just having positive feelings, and it really reminds me of how people describe NDEs, that there's just like love and you're surrounded by so much love, like, usually more than you've ever felt in a lifetime and there's nothing bad there's no fear there's no negative feelings yeah. um, so i can understand why most people that have ndes wouldn't want to come back if it were up to them yeah it took me in fact just the past handful of years before i've talked with a lot of nde experiencers and they are the ones who said to me well you've had a near-death experience you just you don't call it that because you don't feel like you were dying but you left your body and you had the full thing and in fact one of the people i've talked to had the exact same visual of the tornadoes and coming back into a specific timeline and, and it was a different timeline than the one when he had left his body or right when he had died <laughs> and uh and so that was the first time i've ever heard anyone else have that exact same experience of choosing which life, and which timeline with the exact same visual as well with the tornado. So, you know, I, I have a lot of near death experience shared aspects. And I think that's fascinating too, to think about that we can have this near death experience without, without our body going through the trauma of dying, actually, like we can do it <laughs> in other ways. Yeah. And I think that as well, to be honest, I think, it's just a definition that we give because, right, right I've heard, um, so I was talking to somebody and he mentioned uh, from a very young age, um, sort of being able to get out of his body. And the more he focused on it, the more he could control it. And then he had a near death as well. But from all that the experience that he's built up with that like it seems like something that he can control so basically going into another dimension or having an otherworldly experience and whether it is because there's a part of dying that's there or because there's something that you can control and you will it into being um but i think it's yeah sometimes um i have to say since i'm in this space i just think of things and think how much is it the definition that we want to give something like is this an nd is it not an nd and how much would it just be like this is what it is right traveling to another dimension um and probably the souls in other dimensions don't think well that was an nde but you had an out of body and there we go Right. Now I'm exactly on that same page. I think language actually holds us back. And I'm, a, I'm an author and a reader and an English teacher. And so like, I love words and I love language. And I always think about how poor they are at, at allowing us to discuss these things. We don't have the right words for it. You can't really express it. You can know it by doing it and you can be it. But it's so hard to communicate it, actually. And then these labels, they can be helpful, right? Because people who have actually had the trauma of their body dying might want to connect with other people who have had the trauma of their body dying along with this experience, which might be a little bit different, right? Where I did not have that trauma of my body dying that I know of. Um, but yeah, the labels sometimes also then just create these distinctions that we don't necessarily need. And it is, I think, helpful to notice that you can access all of these other dimensions and all these other layers of consciousness without dying. You can definitely do that. <laughs> and a lot of people do. And I think that's helpful to know, too. It's also, I think, varying shades of experiencing that happens to a lot of people. So people who haven't quite had the full, like out of body, going to the center of the universe, coming back through a tunnel or any of those types of things, you might have still had moments where you just really understood what you are and you experienced a moment in like the different way and you had an awakening sort of level or you had like the feeling and the presence of God come to you. 
these are profound too. And we don't give those as much attention because they don't have a good label, right? They don't have a good word that we can like pinpoint them and follow them and look at them and say that. But I think a lot of people can relate to those experiences too more often. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And I wanted to ask you, because you've had this particular experience of, you know, sort of coming back through this vortex and choosing a certain vortex. So you chose a certain life, whereas it's so it sounds like there were multiple lives you could have chosen from. You yeah. chose a certain one and then you came back via this vortex, uh, which, again, is something that I've heard often in this space so there seems to be a connection there and you've also come back through the end of your life so you've seen scenes of your life that would have happened later um, that probably still haven't happened yet and I'm curious with the knowledge and vocabulary that you have today how what was happening in the world or in my life what or? was happening with you so why were you going through that vortex? Why were you seeing those images of yourself? Hmm. I, mean, I really feel like I was given that opportunity to choose because after that point in my life, I've actually had many, many close encounters with death where I probably should have died or easily could have died or, and then I didn't. <laughs> and I almost always didn't die for pretty miraculous reasons. So I feel like I, I literally chose that portal because it was one where I had the most time here in which to be this higher level of myself or bring this message in whatever way I can or help people to connect to that understanding of themselves, which I feel like is the mission, right? <laughs> I want to help people to do all those things and to really live their at the very least, live a life where they're aware that they are a soul. And, and at the very best, live in that empowered soul state where they uh, feel like they are the creators of their own uh, reality, right? And that they can thrive in that and uh, that nothing can stop them from doing that. So I chose that funnel, I believe, for that reason. Like I said, I, which I want to go to the life that's best for me and everyone else. Like this is a really good life for me. <laughs> Who knows what those parameters are? Apparently one of them is longevity. <laughs> so I live a long time, a lot longer. And also then I get to help more people and not just me, right? This is also there for a timeline where a lot of people are helping a lot of people, where a lot of people are coming back online, let's say, or stepping up into their higher self or experiencing life in this higher way. And that's a great life to live as well. And it's, again, it's hard. There's difficulty. There's purification that's going on for everyone who's doing that. We're all shedding like the trauma and the loss and the grief and the stress and the anxiety of the world that was false that we had been creating before now, right? And that's hard. It hurts. And there's a lot of loss and grief involved in it. Um, but I believe that, that we've chosen this together, that I'm not the only one who chose this life on purpose, right? And who chose this timeline on purpose. And uh, so that also gives me a lot of hope. So I think that's part of why I also, I, there's a big chunk of the timeline that I didn't get a single memory or vision or scene that I recall. And so I always said like before 2020, when I would tell the story, I'd say 2020 is when the, it's all up in the air for me. I don't know anything about it <laughs> or 2021, if, if it was 2021, but then that year came and went and I was like, wow, that was a huge shift for the world, right? Like whatever good, bad, or neutral we think came from 2020 and 2021, it was big. So I almost wonder too, if I purposely hid those scenes from myself, because there are a lot of times, you know, I talk to my spiritual guides and allies a lot. I do it on behalf of other people. And there's questions I have for myself or other people are asking of me to ask them. And there is no answer. A lot of times there's an answer and sometimes there's not. And sometimes it's the weirdest question where I'm like, really, we can't get an answer to that question. It seems so simple. But almost all the time when something like that is hidden, it's not hidden against our will. It's like some higher aspect of us was like, let's not actually look at that because you wouldn't do it the same way if we told you, or you wouldn't do it at all if we, you knew how long it was going to take or how hard it might be, or, or maybe even something else. It's just so unexpected. Like we were saying earlier, the version of yourself you might see is just so 
different from what you expect, that it would kind of be too jarring. There's all kinds of reasons why we might not know something. So I'm in a time right now where I have no idea. Back before then, I had a, I had a decent idea of some of the things that might happen to me. And I have, I have no clue I'm in that unknown period. That's really exciting. It's pretty exciting. It's open-ended. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. And I still kind of know the end point, right? I'm in a pretty pleasant place at some point in the future, in the distant future, it seems, as I die. So I don't die in pain or squalor or terror. Or... That's pretty hopeful. But does it change? Did it change just knowing? Because... I definitely want to get into how these experiences changed your life and the trajectory you were going on. But before we get into that, I really want to know, because a lot of us, I think we wouldn't be able to handle it, right? If we knew we're going to die at that time, that age, that circumstance, like if we were almost given that image that you were given. Yeah. Like, how did that change things for you? And do you think it's better that you sort of know and you'll have a feeling when that moment comes like, okay, we're nearing the end? Do you think it's better or do you think it's worse that you know that? I think it's better for me personally. And it's a great question because I don't think it would be for everyone necessarily. But for me personally, it's better because that trust, that faith, where I'm like, oh, I mean, this is fine because I make it through this, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I've seen the very farthest point of this life, so this is okay. And I'm there intact, right? So I'm not going to lose a limb or any of those things either. And so this trust and this faith has allowed me a sort of level of surrender to the path of my life and the choices that I feel called to or, or guided to by my soul or by my spiritual guides or allies. Um and the surrender to that has created amazing things I wouldn't have done otherwise. I wouldn't have chosen otherwise. I wouldn't have had enough trust. I would have had more fear about life. And I think in general, out-of-body experiences have that effect, even if you didn't have that experience of seeing this later point in my life, right? I, I think a lot of people come back with that understanding of it honestly doesn't even matter, right? Like this physical body is very, very beautiful. It's very cool. It's the temple, right? It's good to take care of it, treat it well, and, and we enjoy it. And it's not us. And it never could be us. It's just a vessel, right? It's, it's a tool. It's a beautiful tool we get to use. And, and so it doesn't actually matter what happens to it. So there's a bit of fearlessness in that. And it's not the same as not having a survival instinct, right? Like you're still going to be afraid. I always say if the bear is running at you, you're still going to be afraid. <laughs> Even if you know you survive it, it's still going to cause adrenaline and all these things. You're still a human. But at a higher level, you just understand like, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Right? I'm free actually of this. I'm not attached to this. Not at the highest level. In the moment, yes. In the fear moment, yes. In the adrenaline, yes. But at the highest level, I, I just know. And no one can take that from me. It can't change. Nothing could change my mind about it because I know it by having experienced it that I'm something else, more pure, beyond this. My, that's my essence. And it can't be changed. It can't be destroyed. There's no danger at that level, right? So it's very freeing. It's very positive for me tend to have that understanding and that feeling. And I honestly wish I could give it to everyone. The world would change in an instant if everyone truly knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that they exist beyond their body and that their consciousness is what they actually are. Their soul is what they actually are. All of all of the earth would <laughs> transform instantly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just since I've been in the NDE space and talked to a few NDEers, you know, the moment that I start going through life and even watching a movie or so, like, it seems to me like we see death in this very convent, like, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. It's awful, it's bad, and you need to avoid it at all cost. Um, and anything that would bring you closer to it is terrifying, and you should run away from it as fast as you could. And this changed, even though I haven't had similar experiences myself, but just hearing stories from end the years, it just changed, you know, what I think about it. And then when you're conscious on that level, that it's actually just a separation and it's just a process you're going through, but it's not forever. Your soul lives on. It's just, 
you know, just like you have a car, but you are not your car. The car is a tool and so is your body in this life. Right. Um, it just seems like how much fear could we take away from everybody if this idea was just general knowledge, right? Like death is okay. Like after you're gone, like it's much better actually. Yeah. And it is right here, right? Yeah, you will you won't really want to come back. And and you do, actually. When your personality and your ego sort of simmers down, you can't wait to come back, actually. <laughs> this is a very, very beautiful experience we get to have here. Uh, but it makes life richer, too, right? Like, when you understand that death, it's not, it's not, it's just a transition that you go through. Like, it's just like birth. You were born. It was kind of intense. It's kind of crazy. And <laughs> death might be that way, too. But it is just a change of form or shape. And your consciousness is continuous throughout all of these births and deaths that you're going to go through, uh, through this experience. And it's very freeing, right? It's very freeing. You get to really take life and say, well, what do I want to do with this then? This time that I have here, what do I want it to be? And even that surprises me how few people really ask themselves that. I remember for a period of time, shortly after these types of experiences, I was asking people like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, I mean, like as humanity, like, what are we doing? Do we have a goal? Do we have an intention? Do we have any sort of like, what are, what are you doing here? And people would be like, I don't know, I'm, I'm eating my lunch. And I'm like, no, but like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and people were just like, what is she talking about? She's weird. Cause we're like 14 or whatever, you know, we're kids. And they're just like, this is a weird, this is a weird conversation. But I've continued to ask people from time to time as an adult, what are you doing here? And how few people have thought to themselves, like, I don't know, what am I doing? What do I want with life? Because death is a given, right? It's absolutely going to happen for you. As my grandma used to say, none of us are getting out of here alive. And it's, it's true. It's fun. <laughs> you just understand, like, this is absolutely going to happen to you. It's happened to countless people before you, countless more after you. It's just a thing that's going to happen. It's, just let it go. And then ask yourself, so what do I want to do with life? There's actually this stoic uh, concept, memento mori, and it means to you know, keep death in mind, right? And that sounds really depressing to some people, but only if, like we were just talking about, you're looking from our societal view that death is this to be avoided, horrible, awful thing. But if instead you're looking at it as like, it's just an expiration point at some point of this current incarnation. So what do I want to do before then? What do I want to make of this life before then? And that's actually very beautiful and inspiring. It's hopeful and it's not dark and it's not depressing. It's kind of joyful. You realize every moment is a gift and I get to do whatever I want with this. It doesn't mean I'm happy all of the time, although I think people think that because I'm often smiling and I do feel in general very happy. Um, but the more we have that understanding, the more often we are thinking in that way of like, all right, what am I going to do with today? What am I going to do with this gift right now? Are you able to, from that point of view, if you're, you know, angry, depressed, stressed, because we all are right at times, um, we get upset, there's things annoying us, stressing us out. How do you get yourself back into that state of being grateful? Um, understanding that you're here for a reason that you chose this that's a great question and i again i think people think i like don't have any of that because i i don't commonly share i mean I'm, this is not what people want to interview me about right so i'm <laughs> not always talking about it but i have a lot of stress and challenges in my life and i have health struggles and i have you know mental and emotional just like everybody and so it's a great question and um and sometimes they're harder than others. I mean, if I'm in like a moment of physical pain or physical distress, that's maybe the hardest place to be conscious of the gratitude and conscious of your higher self and conscious of the love and all these things because it's a very immediate sort of uh disconnecting situation. But in general for any of these, like my go-to is to go outside and to get on the earth. And the earth has just this beautiful life force, this energy and this love. If you want to compare it to God, I think it's an apt comparison. If it's not just another version of God, I don't know what the earth is. And it's just ready to like let all of that leak out of you. Just remove it from you. I mean, this is what grounding is. We're just literally like releasing all of this stuff that not really ours. It's built up over 
misconceptions and disconnections and the stress of this life. And, and so we can let it go down into the earth. And there's no magic recipe for this. I mean, you can do it any way you want. You can just know what's happening, or you can imagine something leaking out of you into it and visualize that. Or you can just say, thank you, earth, for taking this from me. <laughs> and thank you for refilling me right? Because this is the other half of grounding is you're getting refilled with this beautiful energy. It's always fascinating to me that materialistically, we can actually measure that as an electric charge, right? That it's this negative electric charge is leaving your body and it's being refilled with a more balanced, neutral, or positive electric charge is literally measurable. So it's actually happening. And as you're doing that, if you want to also, I think it's a beautiful thing, just like prayer, right? You can pray to a being that you love, Jesus or Muhammad or Vishnu or whatever, or you can um, pray to the earth, or you can just have a conversation. And I think it's so helpful because what you're actually doing is actually talking to those beings, or you can talk to you at the higher level of yourself and be like, hey, this is really stressing me out. I'm really angry. Or I'm really sad. And here's what's going on. And this is what I want. Or why is it like this? And you may be shocked if you are not a person who has done this often, that you actually will receive answers and solace and comfort <laughs> because something is actually talking back to you. Somebody, someone, that being you're thinking of, they're giving you love and they're giving you messages and energy, even if it's on a subconscious level, you're receiving it. Uh, but oftentimes it will become conscious. You'll just suddenly solve the problem. What if, the, what if I do this or what, if, or you just feel better. <laughs> so I love, I think it's such a simple tool. I know a lot of people are like, I don't have natural spaces around me, but you do even in the city going to stand on the sidewalk, you can ground this. The concrete is still grounded. <laughs> you can still, there's trees. You can go hug one. <laughs> I know you may look like, you know, whatever, go sit with your back against it. Like whatever it is you need to do it, nature is around you. Uh, and so you can find it. It might not be the ideal picturesque place you'd love to be, but it's still just as good and beautiful. And, and so this is a powerful thing that anyone can do. I love it. Browning has definitely been on my list and I'll say I'm not a big nature person, which <laughs> sounds very fussy of me, I know, um, because I always think, will something crawl on me if I just, maybe a year ago or so, I could feel like not necessarily that I was fainting, but like at some point, it, it's a very weird feeling where I was sort of like, becoming sort of becoming aware that my body was like different and then sort of not yeah. so it was just like an instant thing not necessarily like out of body or traveling but a very momentarily different awareness of of my body and i have to say one of the advices that i was given then was to ground um so that my soul can better align and my chakras can better align with my body hmm. which i have not done so i still well, have i'll to tell use. you you don't have to be barefoot although i do think that's ideal like that is the best way to ground for sure but you can throw a blanket out and lay on it and you're still grounding you're still in the hug the embrace of the earth you're still letting the electrons go down into the earth um and and receiving the positive ones back so don't don't feel put off if you have to do it in your way that's beautiful i mean even if you were to have like a somehow i don't know lead or like blocking blanket that you were sitting on it would still be positive to be out in the air and the sun and, yeah. right you're still connecting with these other aspects of life and i mean we are nature uh so the more we're in nature there's so many aspects of it that are healing even the you know plants and things tend to be fractal looking our brain loves that. Our brain is like, oh, fractals. <laughs> Look at this plant. <laughs> we love this. This is beautiful. So even those types of aspects are really positive too. So don't let it stop you. I really, I'm really turned off by bugs. So <laughs> I have to go out and, you know, make sure that I'm protected in whatever ways I want from those types of things. But I think we can all, we can all find our way that works for us. For sure. Yeah, I'll definitely give this a go. And to sort of redeem myself, I have to say, since the pandemic, I've been, I have this little lake that's close by to my house, house and, and I've started taking a walk. It's about eight kilometers, so I'm not quite sure. Maybe it would be five miles in... Sounds right. U.S. <laughs> metric system, <Yeah. laughs> I reckon. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just like a beautiful lake and going around it and there's nature around it, it almost seems like a forest. And 
the more I've done it every day when everything was uncertain, when I felt like my mental health like was really something I needed to get under control and um, everything was changing. Um, but it was so good doing that. And I've kept that habit since because I feel like it does wonders for my mental health. Yeah. So whenever I know that somebody struggles with that, I say, well, just go for a walk. And even if you don't have, you know, a park close by, like just do it around the blocks, I guess. But um, if you can have some water or some trees um, in the area, that would be amazing. Yeah. I mean, their consciousness is helping you. That's all they, they live to serve, right? That lake has its own consciousness and the river has its own consciousness and each tree has its own consciousness. And so you're surrounded by friends, really. <laughs> and they're, and they're more psychic than human. They're not more psychic than humans, but they are more in touch with that aspect of themselves. So they're like, they're holding you too, whether you want it or not, or know it or not. They're like, oh, I love you, friend. Sorry, you're sad. You're like, oh, you feel this in your heart if you really get in touch with it. So it's, it's, there's so many reasons to go be in nature. So is this really happening that, you know, there's this cause that's supporting us and sort of like healing us or calming us down when we're more in touch with green spaces, natures, nature, yeah. etc. Well, I'll say this, yes, that each of these things has its own consciousness. And again, they're, they're loving, they're in infinite service. This is one of the beautiful aspects of nature is it's, that's what it does. It just is in service of all of life. <laughs> it's just it's an infinite support, no judgment, like very beautiful. But also when you're in those states, and in those places, you are getting a deeper connection with yourself. And that that's actually the really healing part. And, uh, you know, in our heart chakra is the place where we are, I'm going to say, quantumly entangled with every other consciousness. So including God, including heaven, including source, whatever you want to call it, right here in your heart, you carry that around with you. And that level of consciousness to get in touch with no matter how you experience it, no matter what method you use to do it, whether it's just walking and thinking about the fact that your heart is this beautiful source of love and light in the universe, or that it is connected to the love and the light in the universe, or you have a specific breathing method, or you have a specific visualization, it's all good. You don't have to go to that. You can just be there and just know that. That is what's so healing and so transforming more than any of those other things. So all those other things are sort of like calling you back to that connection. All the trees are like, hey, you're loved. Hey, we love you. And the earth is like, hey, you're loved. Hey, we love you. Hey, all of the lake, all of the air, all the sun, all the everything's like, hey, you're loved. By the way, did you remember you're loved? And so the more you're letting that in and remembering that and allowing that, that's the healing. The more recently, so within the past, I maybe literally just a year or so, I went into a sort of shamanic space, deeper meditation, sort of trance state or whatever people want to call that. And I asked to be brought back to the center of all things. I was in a sort of like darker time. I was a little bit, you know, feeling some hopelessness or some sadness or some grief, you know, and I was like, can, can you just take me back? Like, I just want to like reconnect with this energy. And they, my spiritual guides and allies, they were like, yeah, we can. And they're always, they're, they're so cheeky. Uh, so they're, they're mischievous. They're like, of course we can. And then they literally brought my consciousness just down into my heart. And actually, this was this profound experience all over again, because I realized that is the center of all things. This, this heart chakra is absolutely exactly the same as the place that I went all the way out through the ship, all the way out in the universe, and saw as the center of all things. That is the heart of God. And this is my heart. And they're not different. And they're in the same place. They were like, because I was like, you kind of cheated. <laughs> you just took me here. This is a smaller center of all things. And they were like, no, it's the same center of all things. And I was like, I mean, it blew my mind. I, and it makes so much sense. And I was like, of course it is. Of course I know that. Of course that's true. Well, how would I not know that before this moment? But also what a beautiful understanding to have been given. And what a very cheeky way to show me this profound truth. <laughs> so you're really connecting with that. That is the beauty and that's the healing. Mm, I love that. 
And Lindsay, we've gotten a bit uh, sidetracked, I think, but it was definitely worthwhile. I wanted to understand more of how these experiences have shaped the path that your life has been on. Yeah, it's a, also a great question. I, I definitely, at the beginning, I think, just learned or was called to, I'll say, live more authentically and also to just make choices that were more aligned with my higher self and again i was in a lot of darkness i was surrounded by a lot of darkness a lot of dark people a lot of dark activities <laughs> but it helped me to always be really clear about oh i'm not dark actually and so i won't go that way and so even though i didn't instantly stop <laughs> all of my negative behaviors and all of my suffering i more and more chose over and over again the light or the good or the honest or the happy or right all of these different things and so over time the change who knows can we even quantify like where i would have been otherwise if i didn't have that light beating in my heart calling me to you know this more authentic more aligned place and i always even before these experiences had a deep desire to help people and a, a deep love for people so i was always i think heading towards sort of helping positions like teaching and, and that's where I ended up going towards and uh but the way I did it also changed because my goal was not then just to sort of help in general or just be there to like hear some pencils and hear some knowledge about English or whatever it is but also to reach a soul and just to however I can remind people of their value and remind them that they're loved and remind them that they are able to choose also the light no matter how dark they feel like they've gone and i think that's been part of my mission i guess is to especially reach out to the people who feel like oh not me oh i'm too dark or i've done too much wrong or i've done too much bad or i've suffered too much or especially those people because i've been there <laughs> i relate to that so the the type of help the quality of help that I wanted to then provide for people, I think was also very obviously changed by this understanding of who I am and what I am and what we're here for and what we're doing here. And then, you know, over time, more and more, I've had more and more experiences where I was very clearly called to help people on a spiritual level and to share spiritual truth with them, to testify, as some might call it, right? And to definitely share deeper aspects of my story so that they could see themselves in it. And to offer people this connection to that center, right? To the center of all things, to God, to source in whatever ways I can. And, and that has sort of changed over time, but it always has had a sort of shamanic bent to it. I've had a lot of shamanic teachers over the years accidentally, and I also have some native heritage. And so that I'm sure has helped inform that, you know, that's epigenetically like within me. Um, so it's an easier route maybe for me to take. I was called to do tarot for people. And so I've been doing tarot for many, many years. And now more recently, I do deeper levels of ceremony. I do more direct channeling of my spiritual guides and things that they want to share. And then I work with people to connect with their spiritual guides and allies, bring through healing energy and also these messages from their spiritual guides and allies. And that really has been one of the most beautiful experiences I've I've been grateful to experience here on earth you know teaching was its own very beautiful uh connection with people and calling people back to their own heart and keeping that fire alive in what i think is a very dark system actually of education but this is a different level of support for people and it's um being able to see how people's lives change because of it is very humbling and very gratifying absolutely yeah, that's so beautiful. And it almost seems like you were set out right on this path, like through your experiences. And they almost happened for you to realize this purpose and the gifts that you have to share with the world. Yeah, I really, and that's part of it, looking back, because some, some of my experiences were not nearly as positive as the traveling to the center of the universe. And, um, and so again, I'd say, well, like, why do I have to deal with this? And it was always like, well, now you have the tools <laughs> to deal with it. And not everyone does, right? And um, I'm sort of um, mentally called to the path of this sort of spiritual warrior 
you know, where when people are in the thick of the darkness, I can just be right there with them and uh, help them get back out of it. And so a lot of my struggles were literally creating that ability in me. And I, I look back and I see that. I see this as just a path of steps that I was led along and taken to be exactly right here, right now, doing this work with people. And I couldn't have done this work if I didn't go through all of those things. That That was life and my soul training me to do this work. I don't really have a lot of other training directly in what I'm doing, except these experiences and the guidance I receive. And so, yeah, I know that this is what I came here to do. Amazing. How can, because we've spoken about your work, how can people connect with you and with your work? Um, the best way is probably to go to rogueways.org. I always say it's rogueways as in pathways, not waves as in ocean waves. Uh, so rogueways.org is the best place. You have my books there. There are some that are source channeled inspirational messages that are really beautiful for people to um, use either as sort of bibliomancy, like divination, like open to a page and get your message for the day or for the moment or the answer to the question that you've been asking yourself or the universe, um, but also just to read as especially the key of transformational healing is almost like a guidebook of understanding ourselves on a deeper level. So that and my fictional novels that are also channeled are also there on the site at rogueways.org. And people can work with me one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to. There's a lot of different options. Again, I do tarot. I do spiritual guidance sessions where we connect with the guides and allies. Um, and I do sound healing and some other things. So there's lots of opportunities for people if they want to reach out and connect in that way. Or they can just say hello, make an email and just drop a line, drop a question or whatever they'd like to do. And there's also a shop there where people can get the orgone that I create, which um, is another thing I was guided to do and create. And um, I didn't really want to, but they were very insistent that I do it. So I've got some orgone on the site as well for people who want to uplift their space or bring more energy into their intentions and manifestations or just have a really good spiritual field in the place that they're at. So rogueways.org is the place to go and be. And you can also connect with my show there and just find out all the things I do. I hope to connect with all of you guys out there and remember that you are deeply loved. You are love and you are loved.